Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about conditional probability. So far what we have studied is the unconditional probability of some event A. An example of this is, what is the probability that we get a number less than 4 when we roll a die? So what we are looking at here is the probability of A, and this is known as our probability law. What we are going to study here is conditional probability. Now let us assume that there is some event B, or equivalently, some event B is given, and we want to find out the probability of A given that B is given. Okay, What is an example of this? Now, given that a number rolled is an odd number, we want to find the probability that it is less than 4. So what we are being told here is that the number that has been rolled is an odd number. This is something that we are given, and this information is already present to us, and using this information, we will have to calculate that the, the probability that the number is less than 4. This is what we can call as conditional distribution of A given B. And we write this as probability of A slash B. That is probability of A given B. This is the conditional probability. So now let us consider an example. Now consider a fair six-sided die. Okay. So that is each and every number uh, of obtaining each and every number is 1 over 6. Okay, So let A be an event that the outcome when we roll this die is 1. So what is the probability of A? As all faces are equally likely, the probability of getting a 1 is 1 over 6 because there are 6 outcomes. Now let us assume that the number that is rolled is an odd number. So what is this set B that we are talking about? This set B is basically the set of odd numbers that you can get when you roll the die. Okay. Now what we have to find out here in this example is what is the probability of A given B? That is the conditional probability of A on B. So we are conditioning on the event B. So our new sample space is 1, 3, 5 instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 because B is the event that the number rolled is odd. Now each of these events are equally likely. That is the probability of getting a 1, 3 and 5 is equally likely. Now the probability of getting A in this case or probability of A given B is going to be 1 over 3. Recall that the probability of A here is 1 over 3 because we are conditioning on B. And what is A? A is the out that the outcome is going to be 1. So Getting 1 out of 1, 3, and 5 is 1 over 3 options, hence 1 over 3. Now, formally, the way we would write this is probability of A given B is the number of elements is in A intersection B, the set, divided by the number of elements in the set B. So the number of elements in the set A intersection B is 1, which is element 1 itself, and the number of elements in the set B is 3. 1, 3, 5. So there are three elements. More generally, if you want to calculate the probability of A given B, it is given by probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of the B event B happening. Now, it is important to note that the conditional probability is only defined if probability of B is greater than 0. Because if probability of B becomes 0, probability of A given B becomes undefined. Now, conditional probability is a probability, so the value of a conditional probability has to lie between 0 and uh, 1, and it, there has to be the non-negativity check, simply because it is a probability value, so it cannot be negative. Now, we are normalizing with uh, the new universe B, so we, we know that probability of G, B given B is equal to Okay, so the new universe is now B because that's what we are using in the denominator to find the conditional probability of A given B. There's another axiom which is called the additivity axiom. So say A1 and A2 are two events or two sets and they are disjoint. In that case, probability of A1 union A2 given B can be written as the probability of A1 given B plus a2 given b. 
This happens because A1 and A2 are two disjoint sets. Let us try to understand this using an example. So here, sigma is the entire sample space. A1, A2 and B are three sets. As you can see, A1 and A2 are disjoint in nature. So when we condition upon B, what we are interested upon is A2 intersection B and A1 intersection B, the two small shaded grayish areas in this blue ball. Now, using the additivity principle, what we will have is probability of A1 union A2 intersection B. That is going to be probability of A1 intersection B plus probability of A2 intersection B. So, when we are trying to find the conditional probability of probability A1 union A2 given B, when we are trying to find this, what we can do is we can write this as probability of A1 intersection B plus probability of A2 intersection B divided by probability of B. We are just using the, the formula for conditional uh, probability. And we can just separate these two terms and we'll get probability of A1 given B plus probability of A2 given B. With this, I'll conclude this video. Thank you for watching.